We've been tracking reports of voter intimidation in battleground states like Arizona, where six reports of voter intimidation have been referred to the Department of Justice and to the state attorney general's office. Now, this past Saturday in the town of Mesa, masked vigilantes armed and wearing tactical gear were lurking near a ballot drop box outside the Maricopa County Juvenile Court. One local woman, a grandmother, just decided to approach the group and record their interaction. You don't mind if I set up right here, do you? No? Is this your friend? No, I'm here to spread the, the good word. Oh, gosh, this one's gonna come off. I'm gonna feel naked. Hi. Hi, guys. How are you? It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi, how are you? How are you? I think I'm just going to go ahead and wash Oh, hold on. You know you're on body cam, right? That's okay. Hey! Don't touch oh, oh, the wow. All right, so those were uh, sheriff's deputies, the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, who were called to the scene, uh, not the guy uh, there with the, the gun. In a press conference yesterday, Sheriff Paul Penzoni said, quote, we'll come and babysit polling sites because people want to misbehave if that's what we have to do to protect democracy. And joining me now is Maricopa County Sheriff Paul Penzoni. Sheriff, it's good to have you on. What, what is the situation uh, from your office's perspective of these folks lurking outside these drop boxes? Well, I think it's it's just an extension of what we see in the last, uh, you know, one or two election cycles, where suddenly there are a lot of folks who feel, um, even even if in their minds is justified that they they're not comfortable with how the vote is taking place, that they're self empowering and they're taking action in a way that they deem to be appropriate, but unfortunately, it's creating a, an environment of intensity. It's creating an environment of conflict, and and it's it's creating an environment that ties up my resources where we just want to make sure that people can vote safely and that, you know, democracy in, the, in this republic can carry on as it should. But it's just a different landscape, Chris. I'm not sure how we got here, but we need to definitely change our, our path now so that it doesn't undermine our, our nation's best interests. Yeah, I mean, I got to say, you know, just if I put myself in the mind of someone who's just going to go drop off a ballot, whatever political affiliation I am, you know, after work, and there's someone sitting there and they've got, they're strapped they got a camera, maybe they got a mask over their face and they're sitting there watching me like, that's not cool, right? I'm not crazy to feel that way. Like that doesn't feel like that's how people should have to deal with something people should have to deal with. Yeah, I think you just hit the nail on the head fundamentally. It's, it's not cool. And, and, and the irony, I guess, to some extent is the fact that those who are there and, and, and feeling self-empowered to patrol and watch those areas are trying to conceal their own identities while they're trying to capture the identities of others. And it creates a, a space of conflict. So as you saw, our, our deputies were out there immediately trying to address the circumstances and, and, and make sure the cooler heads prevail. Uh, we we learned this lesson last year. Last year was pretty considerable for Arizona. We were a swing uh, state when it came to the presidential election. We saw a lot of focus here. And although we did not expect it, and I don't want to say we were unprepared, but we just hadn't prepared for it, we responded very aggressively because I believe that if you are ahead of these issues, if you show strength in your efforts to protect the nation and protect the people of the nation, then those who want to undermine it or do harm are less inclined. But if you show weakness and there are vulnerabilities and flaws, then they feel more empowered and others kind of re replicate and reflect that behavior and, and a snowball becomes an avalanche. Yeah. So we're just trying to stay ahead of it and make sure we send a message strong. Yeah, that, that makes sense to me. And again, it's it's always hard to tell, right? Like who is just engaged in, in sort of dress up and have nothing better to do and who are people who are genuinely you know menacing or threatening and obviously there's been real threats directed at people uh who work on elections all throughout the country and in arizona this was an email obtained by a local news outlet uh you know saying if you continue to f with the integrity of az elections i guarantee you we the people will remove you from office additionally if you own a home we will find you through the tax assessor's website remember the french revolution of 1799 um other election workers have received this email their name has been redacted but I, it does seem like it must be hard in your position 
to distinguish between what's scary and threatening and what is people being ridiculous, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, and we're on the air on the side of making sure people are safe. But but I, I'd say, you know, I can say it as a sheriff, but I'll really just say it as, as an American, as a human in this nation. Uh, I feel for the people that come to work every day just trying to facilitate democracy, the vote in this republic. They, they come from all walks of life. They represent all parties. And they go there with checks and balances to ensure that they can count the vote and then deliver the results and let the, let the nation have confidence in those outcomes. Their integrity is being questioned. Their families are being threatened. And, and why? For what? And there are, there are leaders who are provocative in the way that it contributes, if not, you know, initiates this type of behavior. And it's not okay. It's not acceptable. As you said, it's not cool. And all I'm trying to do is turn the temperature down and say, hey, let's get back to being good people first, Americans who believe in our nation that come together to ensure the results are accurate. But by, you know, using threats or intimidation or tactics such as those to believe it improves our nation, it doesn't. It tears apart the fabric of who we are. And it does not make you, uh, you know, I think a lot of people try to say they're patriots right now under the, this this guise. That's not patriotism. It's intimidation and it's bullying. Sheriff Paul Penzoni, who is the sheriff of Maricopa County, which is, of course, the largest county in Arizona and has a lot of uh, activity, a place where a lot of votes are going to be cast uh, in this election. Sheriff, thank you for taking a little time with us. And I appreciate it. Thank you for your time, Chris. You have a good day, sir. All right.